Vice President of AVAC. I'm running the meeting tonight. Keith um, had to take some time off. So I'll call the uh, first item, uh, call to order, um, roll call. Okay. Division 7, Gary Van Dam. Here. Division 6, Audrey Miller. Here. Division 5, Robert Paris. Here. Division 4, George Lane. Here. Division 1, Shelly Sourceable. Here. Division 3, Frank Donato. Here. And Division 2, Keith Dias will not be present, so I will not call his name for the rest of the meeting. Thank you. Um, Dwayne Chisholm. Here. Tilden Kim. Here. And Holly Hughes present. Okay. Um, that brings us uh, to number three, voluntary public roll call. If any of the members of the public wishes to introduce themselves, please feel free to do so now. Vincent, Jack Vincent Dino, yeah. Palmdale Water District. <laughs> Jack Cephas, White Fence 3. John Joyce, reporting for the Act and I'm with OC News. Anybody else? Okay. Well, welcome. Okay. That brings us to item four, um, public comments and period open to the public. If you have any uh, wishes uh, to address the board on any of the items not on the agenda, please feel free to do so. Okay. Um, okay, let's go to item number five, adoption of the agenda, um, item 5A1. Can I have a, a motion? Mr. Vice President, this is uh, Director Miller. I move that we uh, adopt the agenda, item 5A1. This is Shelly, I'll second. Thank you. Um, is there any questions or comments or additions to the um, board minutes of September? Hearing none, uh, I have to entertain a motion. Roll call, please. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Shelly Sourceable? Yes. Frank Donato? Uh, yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Item six, consent calendar. Um, the public and board shall have the opportunity to comment on any of these action items. On uh, the consent, consent calendar, as a consent color is considered uh, collectively by the board of directors prior to the action being taken. Um, do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? Uh, yeah, Frank, you know, this is George. There's a couple of you know, large items on there. I'm sure, let me see if that's in the cons consent calendar. Um, um, I don't I didn't hear what he said, um, Holly. Yeah, the, the, high, the high desert you know, water bank, that is, I think it's on the consent calendar. One number's for 588,000, the other for 234,000. Can we take those off and just, I know we're gonna have to pass them, but we can just discuss them just a little bit. Yes, uh, Board uh, Vice President uh, uh, Donato, we will be having a uh, High Desert Water Bank presentation where uh, those items will be discussed in detail um, in this uh, particular, um, uh in, in the uh, on the agenda and we can address those at that time if that's uh, uh if that's appropriate yeah okay so george i'm, I'm as confused i don't think that's part those are items were part of the yeah. consent uh, yeah. uh 6a1 6a2 uh, it doesn't it doesn't look like it we're looking closer okay is that okay with you we just go ahead and um approve yeah. these first and then yes. do the other one yeah any a motion out to entertain Consent calendar, please. Mr. Vice Chairman, this is Rob. I move we approve the consent calendar. Thanks, Rob. This is Shelley. I second. Okay. Any any 
questions on this? Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Gary Van Dam. Yes. Audrey Miller. Yes. Robert Paris. Yes. George Lane. Yes. Shelley Sorcival. Yes. Frank Donato. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, now we're on number seven. Uh, Planning Commission. Um, Director Sorcival is chairman. Can you uh, give us an update on that? Sure, the committee met and I'll go ahead and um, ask Dwayne to give us a briefing on that. Yes, uh, uh, I'll, uh, we'll turn it over to uh, Matt Knudsen, who's been working with the uh, uh, with Paul Chow and the AB State Water Contractors on the uh, Big Rock uh, Creek uh, Joint Groundwater Recharge Project. And he has some background uh, prior to the uh, presentation that will be pre presented by Kennedy Jenks. Uh, but I do want to iterate, uh, reiterate that we're this is information only. We're not asking uh, the board to take any action on this. Uh, we're just uh, uh, providing information with regards to the work that the ABC water contractors have done to date with regards to the Big Rock Creek uh, uh, groundwater recharge uh, conceptual approach. So, All right. Thank you, Dwayne. Good evening, directors. It's Matt. So as Dwayne mentioned, uh, the Antelope Valley State Water Contractors Association, made up of AVAC, Palmdale Water District, and Little Rock Creek Irrigation District. It's a JPA that we've been a member of since late 1990s. And a couple years ago, the association wanted to uh, decide to take on the task of studying and looking into the feasibility of the jointly developing a groundwater recharge facility somewhere in the vicinity of uh, the Big Rock Creek, where the uh, north of where the aqueduct crosses Big Rock Creek. So the, the three member agencies through the association developed a, an MOU uh, for this project specifically and agreed to the cost share of the feasibility study at 47% uh, funded by AVAC, or 47.5% by AVAC, 47.5% by Palmdale Water District, and the remaining 5% by Little Rock Creek Irrigation District. So that, as I mentioned, that work started a couple years ago, and we've done some uh, field investigation, some pilot work of recharge within the basin, and so we're here tonight to present kind of the findings and level of effort we went through with KJ. KJ is the lead engineering firm that's worked on this for the association. So Paul Chow is here this evening with us to go through a brief presentation. Uh, we got quite a few slides, but it should go fairly quick. And as Dwayne mentioned, we, we just want to give the full AVAC board an update as to where we're at with the feasibility study, um, just so the project doesn't get too far along without our full board being up to date as, as to what level of effort and what findings we're seeing out there. So if you don't have any questions at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Paul Chow. And Paul, uh, just let me know when you want to advance the slides, I, I can control that on our end. Great, thanks Matt. And thank you for, for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. And so like Matt mentioned, I'll be presenting a basically a status update on where we are with the Big Rock Peak Recharge Study, uh, specifically about the premier findings uh, that we've developed uh, from the alternatives analysis. Next slide, please. Uh, so here's a quick agenda for what we'll cover tonight. Uh, we'll provide a little background information on the study and the project provide an overview of the recharge alternatives that were considered um, and go through the, the analysis and rankings of those alternatives and then uh, follow up with uh, some next steps for the study. Next slide. Uh, so a little background on the study. Uh, the purpose of the study is to evaluate uh, the feasibility of conducting artificial recharge operations uh, in and around Big Rock Creek area and so we will be utilizing recharge water uh, from state water project supply. 
And so what, one of the first tasks that we conducted with this study was to conduct a, a pilot test, a recharge demonstration project to see if we can utilize the natural creek bed uh, to conduct our artificial recharge operation. Uh, this would obviously be the most cost-effective uh, solution for, for the association in being that it wouldn't require any new facilities uh, to be built to conduct this recharge. There's an existing state water project turnout right next to the creek, and we can just open the spigot and, and let the creek do its thing. Uh, so we conducted this uh, this demonstration test um, around 2019, and unfortunately, uh, the results from that demonstration showed that uh, we had we could only achieve limited capacity with using the natural creek uh, with an estimated uh, recharge capacity of about 1,100 acre feet per year. And I'll, I'll go into a couple of the of the main reasons why that occurred in the next couple of slides. And so with the relatively poor results uh, from that demonstration project, uh, we worked with the association and staff to develop uh, potential project alternatives for conducting artificial recharge around a creek to reach our recharge objective of 20,000 acre feet per year. Next slide. Uh, so this is a map of the Big Rock Creek area, which is kind of shown um, moving from south to north here in the middle of the figure. <clears throat> and so the, the creek uh, comes out of the San Gabriel Mountains, uh, kind of around, uh, right next to where the Crystal Air uh, Country Club is located. And it flows north uh, past Highway 138 and further north uh, up to Avenue T. And that's, that's a, a, an important marker in the, um, in the, in the landscape of, of this creek. The, where the creek crosses Avenue T, that is an at-grade uh, crossing, meaning that if there's, if there's flow in the creek um, at that crossing, it, bit, it floods Avenue T. And so when, we, uh, so when we think about conducting artificial recharge using the creek, that Avenue T crossing is a constraint. We don't want to uh, flood that flood that street crossing uh, with our artificial recharge. So we need to limit uh, the volume and flow from our artificial recharge operations so that we don't uh, flood Avenue T. And, and that was the, the biggest constraint uh, in terms of um, artificial recharge flow when we conducted the demonstration test. Uh, unfortunately, though, the flow as it, as, it, as it went down the creek, it, it channelized into a pretty narrow flow and, and just went straight down to Avenue T, and that, that severely uh, limited us. Next slide. And so on this slide, uh, this shows um, how, how the creek uh, will uh, convey a natural, a natural surface water runoff, which is shown in blue, versus our artificial recharge, which is shown in red. And what this what this graph tells you is that we cannot conduct um, our our artificial recharge operation when there was natural surface water runoff in the creek. Uh, when there was natural runoff, it would already be reaching Avenue T, and so we cannot conduct our our artificial recharge operation. So we had to wait until uh, that runoff was basically has basically um, uh, stopped and um, and the creek bed was dry then we conduct, could conduct our artificial recharge. And so this basically limited us to uh, only be able to utilize the creek about half of the year. Next slide. And so with the limited uh, um, recharge capacity from using, a mat, from, from using the creek bed, we looked at four alternatives uh, for conducting artificial recharge in and around uh, Big Rock Creek. And so over the next few slides, um, I'm going to give a, a quick summary of, of each alternative, going over uh, the potential capital and O&M costs and the key advantages and disadvantages. Next slide. So alternative one involves building uh, push-up berms uh, within the creek bed itself. And, and the purpose of the, of the berms would be to, to spread out the water uh, throughout the creek to really utilize the full uh, width of the creek to conduct um, our, our recharge operation and, and this will help this would help maximize the available creek area uh, for recharge 
and, and these firms would be relatively similar to, to index um, firms at the Westside Water Bank. And so this is a, a, a relatively cost-effective uh, alternative of uh, being only about, probably about half a million dollars to construct and would potentially allow us to reach our recharge objective of 20,000 acre feet per year. However, given that we're uh, conducting construction within um, a, a waterway within the creek bed, there would be intensive environmental permitting requirements in order to get a project like this um, actually constructed and operating. It's anticipated that the permitting process would take up to two years to complete uh, the initial permitting uh, for this project. Um, and as, as you might know from, from our experiences with the Westside Water Bank, anytime there's a, a large rain event and there's, there's um, uh, a, lot, a lot of natural flow within the creek, these berms will, will wash out. And so every time the, the berms wash out, they would have to be reconstructed. And when they get reconstructed, uh, additional environmental surveying and documentation would be required um, because it's basically kind of you're 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 almost starting a new construction project every time you 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 would rebuild these these berms and so not only is, is the are the initial environmental permitting requirements very intensive but there's ongoing continuous very intensive uh, environmental requirements in order to get a project like this off the ground. Uh, next slide. Alternative two involves building uh, culverts at the. Um, street crossings at Avenue T and Avenue S. And, and this would help us uh, mitigate that constraint of, of flooding uh, those, those creek crossings at, at those two locations. And so uh, this is also another relatively cost-effective um, uh, solution, uh, building these culverts at the roads, allowing, allowing the, the, the recharge water to flow underneath the streets. Uh, however, uh, although it's cost effective, it, we would still be relatively limited in terms of capacity uh, based, based on the data we, uh, we have from the demonstration test and, and projecting the amount of creek we would utilize uh, under this alternative, we would have, a, we would have about a, uh, an approximate recharge capacity of 2,200 uh, acre feet per year. So this was cost effective, but also does not get us to our recharge objective of 20,000 acre feet per year. Next slide. Alternative three involves building uh, engineered uh, recharge basins uh, offsite. So we would get out of the creek uh, of, uh, with this alternative, we would build uh, the recharge uh, facility kind of outside the jurisdiction of the creek, uh, utilizing the existing turnout and, and building a new pipeline to get to our recharge area. And this, this alternative provides us with the ability to meet our recharge objective of 20,000 acre feet per year. Although that will come at a higher cost, uh, given that we are building um, uh, kind of more facilities uh, than compared to the first couple of alternatives. And so with the concepts shown here, uh, with the recharge uh, basin location, this, this project is uh, with costs about approximately $10 million uh, in, in terms of capital investment. Uh, one, of, one of the advantages of this alternative is that uh, the permitting requirements will be uh, uh, much less than compared to the other alternatives. Uh, we would be building in already disturbed uh, lands, farmland, farmlands. And so uh, the environmental permitting requirements would be much more straightforward and uh, easier to deal with than, than working with the creek. Um, the concept at, as shown here is relatively conservative in terms of the location of the recharge site. This, this site is about two and three quarters of a mile away from the turnout. Uh, there is potentially a lot of uh, cost optimization that can occur with this, with this uh, project concept if we're able to site the recharge facility uh, closer to the turnout, we would save a lot of money on pipeline costs. Uh, next slide. And so that's uh, shown in, in the cost curve here, uh, shown on this slide. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the concept I shown before, about 2.7, 2.8 miles away from the turnout, so that's about $10 million. But for example, if we're able to site that recharge facility about a mile away from the turnout, um, 
we would be able to have that capital capital investment to about five million dollars. Next slide. And our for, our fourth alternative considers um, an alternative turnout site uh, for the project. Instead of using the existing turnout at Big Rock Creek, we would use um, AVEX existing turnout at the uh, Eastside uh, Water Treatment Plant. And this would allow us to uh, discharge water uh, basically behind the Avenue T crossing, so we can avoid uh, that constraint. Uh, however, uh, when, when, when we do that, we still, we still are working with the same limitations of using the creek uh, for, for recharge of um, the state water project supply. And so at the end of the day, we, we, would, we would still have a relatively limited capacity of 2,200 acre feet per year. But at the same time, we have some relatively heavy capital cost investments, uh, capital costs involved here of about $10 million to build the, the pipeline and pump station from, from the turnout uh, to the Avenue T uh, crossing discharge. Uh, so th this this one had a relatively low yield and high cost, but uh, another another positive of this alternative is that uh, with the with the alternative turnout location, uh, there will be uh, potential O and M savings uh, by avoiding the O and M cost of the pear blossom pump station lift with the state water project. Uh, next slide. And so those, those were the four alternatives that were considered. Um, and we evaluated those alternatives using the criteria shown here. Uh, we have quantitative criteria such as uh, recharge capacity, capital cost, blending cost, and subjective criteria such as uh, regulatory permitting requirements, uh, community impacts, and ease of construction. And we work with staff to uh, weigh uh, the, these criteria, and that's shown in the furthest right column here. Uh, on, on the table. Uh, next slide. And so we evaluated each of the alternatives uh, against the, the weighted criteria. And, and this table shown on this slide uh, summarizes uh, the scoring uh, for each of the alternatives. And so for, for each criteria, each alternative was scored on a range from zero to five, with five being the highest. And so we can see with, uh, take a look at the first criteria here, the recharge capacity. Uh, alternatives one and three uh, achieved the highest score of a five because uh, they were, uh, both of those alternatives were able to meet the recharge capacity objective of 20,000 acre feet per year. And, and the other alternatives were scored proportionally relative the, to, to their, to their uh, potential recharge capacity. Uh, similarly, we also see that alternative one uh, had achieved the highest score of five on capital costs because of the relatively cost-effective nature of building those push-up berms within the creek. But also, um, if we go further down the table, it received the lowest score uh, of a 0.5 uh, as it relates to regulatory and permitting requirements due to the intense permitting requirements for um, building for building within the creek itself. So next slide. So we um, add up all the scores and apply our weighting factors. Alternative three, uh, which involves building the offsite recharge basins, scored the highest as was, was ranked first out of the four alternatives. Um, although alternative, these are engineered facilities, we can optimize the sizing of the facility as this project moves forward to the exact needs uh, of the association. It also keeps us out of the creek uh, with the project, which will greatly simplify the permitting and regulatory requirements. And uh, another benefit of that is that we won't have to share the creek recharge capacity with, with Mother Nature and a natural surface runoff. Excellent. So um, uh, with alternative three and moving forward with that concept, the next steps would be to uh, identify specific parcels um, adjacent to Big Rock Creek where we can potentially site the recharge facility. Uh, as I mentioned, the closer we can we can site that recharge facility to the turnout, uh, the more uh, savings and costs we'll be able to achieve. And we could potentially bring bring the capital costs significantly down uh, if we can bring it uh, closer to the turnout. And we'll continue to, to work with staff to optimize design for, for the engineer facilities, make sure 
uh, we're targeting the right uh, recharge uh, and conveyance capacities and move forward with uh, any field investigations that may be required, uh, preliminary design and CEQA documentation. Next slide. And that's, uh, that's all I had to present uh, to you today. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Just uh, this is, uh, George Lane, just a, a comment. This may have made sense um, 10, 15, or 20 you know, years ago, but AVAC were involved in you know, three projects at this time, recharge you know, projects. And this water's got to come from, from, from somewhere, and we don't you know, have the water to, to recharge a reliable you know, source. And um, I think it was mentioned it, it's probably got to be done in um, when we're in the, when the creek, I guess, and the other alternatives when it's not you know, flowing. And that's when we need you know, the water the most in the summer. But uh, we really haven't given any, any, any thought to where this water is going to come from. And with our three existing you know, projects, I think it makes very little sense. And we're looking at you know, cutbacks from, from the state. And um, if it's been in the first project, it may have made sense, but at this point, it does not. <clears throat> And there's some other alternatives that haven't been discussed either, or other potential problems that haven't been discussed. <clears throat> the director Van Dam, I agree with George. And also one of my concerns is, is does that water stay in the bank or where's that water end up at? Yeah, this water would uh, be recharged within the groundwater basin. And uh, at this point, the concept is that the members of the association would be able to uh, receive pumping credits uh, for the recharge water and will utilize their existing wells uh, to recover. Right, or, but are we sure that that water actually stays in that area or is that... Uh, I mean, Big, Big Rock Creek runs eventually down to what, the dry lake bed? Right. Right. Um, and um, with with the concept, uh, the recommended concept, uh, it will be, we will be closer to um, um, the upstream side of, of the creek. And so uh, we wouldn't be going that, uh, the water wouldn't be going all the way down there. Um, the recharge water wouldn't be going all the way down there uh, under the current concept. Mr. Vice President, this is Rob. Can I make a comment? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the state water contractor has been working on this project for probably two and a half years now. And before we even started uh, talking about the project, we had meetings with the uh, water master engineer, Phyllis, and had her weigh in on her thoughts about this project and, and would we be able to claim this uh, as bank water. And so uh, that, that question was answered long ago regarding that issue. And this is also a joint project with uh, Palmdale Water District and also Little Rock Irrigation District. So they would be getting credit for water that they would bank. And I think other than Armagosa Creek, there's no other banks that uh, Palmdale had access to right now. And so this would be a shared expense with them. And so we've looked that capacity for water and the use of this. And uh, so far, it looked like a very cost-effective uh, water banking opportunity for us. So a lot of these questions you're asking are really good questions that we uh, talked about a few years ago. Just thought that would be helpful for you. Yeah, um, yeah Mr. President, this is George Lane. Um, you know, one of the items, everything's a cost and you know, benefit you know, ratio, but you're going to have water to put in the dang water bank. And, you know, we've got three existing, you know, water banks and you know we use pretty much all of our capacity when it's it's available and to try to take additional water from the aqueduct you know level and put it in the, um, you, you know recharge it and have to pump it up again it it makes very very little sense and again as i mentioned earlier if we weren't doing projects it would make a lot of sense and we have to have water to put in there and you know right now we don't have enough you know water to you know, 
it's the capacity for all of our, you know, water banks most of the time. So, you know, I think we're pretty well set at this point. So this, this is Rob again, George. I think, you know, you bring up a really good point and that's that's something we should look more into. But I, I, I don't think that we're at the point where in wet years we don't have water to put in there. But certainly something we should look at uh, as we go forward. But again, you know, we've been working on this project for a couple, two and a half years now. We've been answering most of those questions. And um, I think that's a question that um, when we go back to the state water contractors, we will uh, get an answer to. I, I have a, this is Director John. I have a comment. Uh, question two. Um, I've always believed that um, Big Rock Creek is a uh, is a great place to put water. I don't know. We've been talking about it for years. The concern the concern is what everybody has said here. I have the same concerns, but the, the bigger concern I have is: Have we gotten a letter from Department of Defense stating that that water, because when that water starts moving down heavily down to the dry beds at Edwards Air Force Base, we have to make sure that we're protected, that they don't claim the water rights um, t to that water. And I, and I don't know if that's been looked at, because that water, I mean, all the studies point to Edwards Air Force Base where it actually ends up um, there. Um, and the other question I have, too, is that it doesn't really help. I mean, it, immediately right now, it's not really helping AVAC. It's going to help D40. I'm assuming D40 and, and Palmdale Water District in those uh, areas out there. Is that correct? Hey, this, this Dwayne, um, I, I, don't, I don't think there's a, a real um, benefit to Waterworks 40 or, or Palmdale. Uh, I think their wells are, are, are fairly far away. It, I think the original concept, just to give you some background, was the fact that we had this uh, creek that Mother Nature uses to recharge the Antelope Valley groundwater basin. And there was uh, uh, a thought that we could do this very economically if we could use the river itself as the recharge component. And, uh, and the reason to do the study was to uh, determine whether we could actually do that or not. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't appear, you know, based on the slope, based on the distances that we have from the, uh, uh, from the aqueduct to Avenue T, uh, that we have the kind of uh, uh, circumstances that will allow us just to put the water into the uh, creek and allow it to recharge uh, naturally. When we have really, really high flow years, uh, we do have a need to, ABEC has a need to put, you know, additional water in the groundwater basin, you know, when we're in those uh, 70, 75 percent years. And uh, if we could do that economically, we could save that water. And as um, uh, Vice President Donato pointed out, the one tricky thing about this is that you can't uh, uh, scoot that water past Avenue T and onto the dry lake bed because you, is, in essence, lose that water because it evaporates away. It doesn't percolate into the ground. So I think that uh, at this point, um, we as an agency need to uh, uh, just accept the, the, the results of the study that have been, uh, uh, been, been performed and then uh, keep it in the in the back of our minds as we as we move forward, and uh, see how it fits into you know AVEX overall picture uh, with regards to our recharge capabilities, um, and see if it uh, really fits or if there's other places uh, in other water banks that uh, become more economical in order to get the uh, an equivalent quantity of water. And, but I, I, I want to assure the, the board that the intent was is of the uh, of the study, from my understanding, was to, that we had this natural resource, which was Big Rock Creek, and, and to determine whether we we had some some uh, way in which to uh, apply this water and, and do it very economically. And uh, so we we came in with high hopes, and unfortunately, I don't think we. Um, uh, Mother Nature is going to cooperate as, uh, as, as we would have liked it. Um, 
um, from the original concept. But these these other alternatives provide a way in which um, if there is a need in that area, you know, the water master has a need, there's other types of things that might be appropriate. At least if we have some information uh, that we can utilize into the future. So that's my, my input. Uh, question, Dwayne. Um, are you saying that if we did a program, let's say we did a program with Edwards Air Force Base, are you saying that the water would not benefit the quality of their existing wells in Edwards? No, it's uh, because the, their their wells at Edwards are on the other, or north of the okay uh, north okay. of the dry lake bed. Okay. So what do we do? Just have a hold up. Yeah, this is just an information only item. We just want to present the information and the work that's being done at the AB State Water Contractors and. Um, um, and then they'll continue to work uh, work through this uh, program, and um, but that's that's where we are today. Okay, so there's no board action today, correct? Correct, no board action. Okay. Any other questions or comments from uh, the directors? Mr. Vice President, this is uh, Director Miller. I do I do have a question or a comment really on this um, alternative three and. How much water would we be diverting from Big Rock Creek? Because I cannot believe that if we take all the water, they'll let us do it, the, the, the CEQA people. And uh, in dry years, we're not going to get that much water to begin with. In wet years, yes, we can take some water from it. Um, so that would be a question as to an impact on the existing Big Rock Creek. Yes, uh, Director Miller, uh, in response to your question, uh, this project would be adding new water uh, from uh, the state water project. So uh, the natural water that comes down the creek would be allowed to continue to go down the creek as it always had. It would only be able. We would only be able to recharge the uh, the new water that's being added uh, to the uh, uh, to the creek uh, from from any of the three partners that would be associated with the project. So it wouldn't be we wouldn't be actually trying to divert water from the creek per se. And like I say, this is very preliminary. Uh, a lot more work needs to be done. If uh, this is an alternative that uh, um, uh, ABEC or in Palmdale or others would like to pursue. Okay, thank you for the clarification. And I, um, I agree with Director Lane and Director Van Dam that this would not be the project I'd be agreeable with. Thank you. Okay, so there's no action. We can move on to the next order, correct? Correct. Okay, let's go to board order. B, uh, Capital Improvement Program, um, 7B1. This is one that George wants to talk about. Um, I'm going to have our system manager, Matt, um, describe what's going on here. Yeah, and I, uh, thank you, Frank. Uh, I'm going to actually have Justin go through the presentation. Here. All right, great. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, Vice President Donato and members of the board. Uh, yes, this project uh, was reviewed by the Capital Improvement Program Committee uh, at the end of August, I believe. And this is for a blending vault uh, to be added to the Roseman water treatment plant. So we have a few slides to go through here with some background on the project and uh, where we're at tonight. So as a reminder, uh, the board awarded a design contract to Kennedy Jenks for the design of a blending vault at the Roseman Water Treatment Plant in October of 2020. Uh, what the project uh, consists of is an in-ground vault, in vault there at the Roseman Water Treatment Plant on AVAC property. Uh, that vault would contain flow control valves, uh, flow meters, and related appurtenances that would allow blending recovered bank state water project water from our west side water bank with surface water treated at the Roseman water treatment plant 
and that water would be blended together in the existing Clearwell Reservoir uh, for the purposes of water quality, so for trihalomethane control. Uh, historically, our Roseman Water Treatment Plant uh, distribution system has had trouble maintaining uh, THM levels within the regulatory standards. Uh, recent years, it hasn't been uh, too bad because the water being served to our north feeder system uh, is currently either recovered banked state water project water coming from our west side water bank via our SNP system. And that water is uh, disinfected potable groundwater, which is served uh, to that system. Uh, so that water has very little of the precursors necessary to form THMs as it goes through the distribution system. Uh, when we are not using the potable wells at the West Side Water Bank, we have been recovering water from our agricultural well network and serving that water into the Rosen Water Treatment Plant, which is treated as surface water, similar to when we're operating on state water project water. And then that water is served into the North Feeder system to our customers. So just like the potable wells, that groundwater also has very low uh, total organic carbon, which is the precursor needed uh, to form THMs when combined with chlorine. As I mentioned, historically, when that system's been on surface water, uh, the surface water has a high TOC content, and that uh, has provided us with some troubles mitigating that in our distribution system. Uh, several years ago, we implemented the groundwater bank at the east side water treatment plant, and blending that recovered banked water at the east side water treatment plant has proven to be a very reliable and effective THM control strategy for the customers in our east side distribution system. Uh, we see uh, single digit levels of THMs in that system routinely now as we blend approximately a 50-50 blend of recovered uh, banked water with our surface water treated at the treatment plant there. So it's a very good strategy. It's proven to be effective uh, for our customers. It's a high-level kind of overview of the project location. You can see an aerial image there of our current uh, Rosemary Water Treatment Plant site, uh, the big round circle labeled there on the right-hand side. That's our Clearwell Reservoir. Uh, to the left-hand side of that is a pump station for our surface water when it's being treated at the plant. And to the right-hand side, you can see a roof structure. That's the uh, SNP or South North Intertide Pipeline pump station uh, at the treatment plant there that serves the recovered banked water from the West Side Water Bank. Uh, in red, you can see the location of the blending vault. Uh, there's an existing pipeline that runs through there. But we have no way of controlling the flow if we were to open a valve there to get into the Clearwell Reservoir. So since there's already an existing pipeline there, and infrastructure uh, that served to be a good location for this project where we can simply tie in uh, to the existing pipeline, add the metering and flow control structures, and uh, be able to blend that water there. It served into the Clearwell Reservoir, we can add water uh, that's been recovered from the West Side Water Bank. Any questions on the project before I get into kind of the bid uh, phase that we went through? All right, so this project was advertised for bids on July 20th of this year. Uh, it was out to bid for about a month. Bids were open at the end of August. Uh, four contractors provided bids for the project. They're listed in the table below. And the engineer's estimate for this project was $560,000. So you can see from high to low, starting at the top, uh, the contractors who proposed on the project, the range of, of bid prices. Uh, and the low bid amount for this particular project was submitted by W.M. Lyles, uh, headquartered out of Fresno, but also with an office in Bakersfield. Uh, their bid price was $571,000. So that uh, came in pretty close to the engineer's estimate. From a budget perspective, uh, $600,000 was included in the current capital budget for this project. 
And uh, noteworthy is that we received a $350,000 Prop 1 grant, uh, which was received for the project from the Fremont Integrated Regional Water Management Group. And that $350,000 grant has a no cost match required. So that's money that, uh, uh, that we get for this project with no additional cost match required. Uh, the contractor that submitted the low bid, WM Lyles, holds a current and active Class A general engineering contractor's license. Uh, they have com uh, previously completed numerous projects and repairs for the agency. Uh, they always perform good work for us and typically give us a really good price for the work that they do. Uh, and so with that, uh, the Capital Improvement Program Committee, as well as staff, uh, would recommend that the board award a construction contract to WM Lyles. Uh, for the lowest responsible bid in the amount not to exceed five hundred seventy-one thousand dollars, be happy to answer any questions that you might have at this time. George, you have any questions? Anybody have any questions? No, no, I don't, uh, Frank. It, oh, that was a very good presentation. So, um, so I, I entertain a motion on um, 7B1. Hi, Frank. This is Rob. I'll um, move approval of 7B1. And this is Shelley. I'll second. Okay. We got a fir first and a second. And um, any other further discussion from the board members? Uh, Roll call vote, please. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Audrey Miller? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. George Lane? Yes. Shelley Sourceable? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. So that brings us to item number C, the High Desert Water Bank Committee. Um, of course, I'm chair, our chairman on this. Um, who's going to, is, is Justin going to go ahead and give us a presentation on this too? Yes, uh, Justin provided the um, engineering update uh, for 7C1. Okay, go ahead. All right, thank you and good evening again, uh, members of the board. Uh, status update on the High Desert Water Bank project. We provided this update to the High Desert Water Bank Committee uh, last week. <clears throat> So starting off here, section one is our executive summary. Uh, you can see the project objective at the top there, which is to develop the high desert water bank to improve the reliability of the state water project deliveries, as well as AVAX financial stability. Uh, the goals of the project are to recharge up to 70,000 acre feet per year. I recover the same amount with a direct pump back to the state water project an overall storage goal of up to 280,000 acre feet uh, with a 10% leave behind in the basin. Uh, so for the project, some short-term goals here over the next three months. Uh, we have some final land acquisitions to, to complete. Uh, they are currently, as you'll see, I'm going to provide some additional details on some of these projects as we go through the slides here, but um, they are performing a pilot well pump testing program. You can see the map on the right-hand side of that screen. There's some yellow stars. Those indicate the locations of what we're calling pilot recovery wells. They're the first four wells uh, to be drilled on the project site. And they're undergoing, the construction of those wells is completed. They're undergoing a pump testing program right now. And I'll have some more details in a future slide. Um, while we're looking at the map, we'll point out a couple other features on there. You can see uh, kind of a bi-directional arrow towards the lower middle half there. That's the location of the proposed turnout structure to serve the uh, surface water into the banking facilities there. And you can also see some of the areas of the map there shaded in purple. Those are properties which are owned by the Tone Ranch Company uh, that are within the project site. And in the uh, feature slides here, we have some uh, information on discussions that we've been having with Tahone uh, regarding the use of those uh, properties on the project site as well. So maybe just keep those purple shaded areas in mind as we go through the presentation. 
Uh, item number three, as far as short-term goals, I guess three and four are kind of related. Uh, three it would be to receive our approval from the Department of Water Resources for that turnout structure, which I just mentioned on the map. Uh, and then once we have that approval, award a construction contract to begin construction for that turnout. Stantec is the design engineer on the project and they're working on the recharge basin design. And so over the next three months, they should progress that design to a, to a feature or a, a more refined level, I guess. We're about 60% right now. And they've been working with Southern California Edison to provide power to the site. And so they'll continue their coordination with that over the next few months. Any questions on this slide here? Yeah, this is Frank. I got a sure. question. Um, how long, DWR, how long before you, well, how, what do you anticipate DWR's approval on the turnout? Uh, they've been very responsive to us so far in reviewing our turnout structure. Um, they've been very cooperative. So we anticipate having approval for that turnout structure uh, before the end of this month and hopefully getting that turnout under construction, you know, this winter. So well, that's good. That's good yeah. news. Yeah, okay. we're trying to target the lower flow periods there in the aqueduct to get that done. Thank you. Uh, moving, moving on to section two, this is the program management. So you can see the uh, project partners there. Of course, we have AVEC uh, there at the top. And then moving from left to right, of course, we have Metropolitan Water District, our project partner, as well as Kennedy Jenks, who's serving as our program manager for this project. Stantec, as I mentioned, is our uh, engineering design and hydrogeology lead. Uh, we have our legal team listed there who's helping with the land acquisitions. Uh, the current construction happening at the project site is Pacific Coast Well Drilling. Uh, they've, they're the ones that are drilling those first four pilot recovery wells and uh, doing the pump testing on those as well. And uh, we have a budget slide here coming up in the, uh, later in the presentation, which we can talk about those two payments that uh, Director Lane pointed out at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, to the left-hand side there, you see recent program management activity, the activities that Kennedy Jenks has been helping AVAC staff with, uh, participating in coordination meetings with uh, Southern California Edison. Uh, they participate in bi-weekly design calls that we have with Scantech, uh, tracking deliverables and reviewing <clears throat> project progress overall, and performing technical reviews of the turnout design, which has uh, been submitted to DWR, as well as the recharge design, which is at 60% level, as I mentioned. On the right-hand side, just a forecast of some upcoming board decisions and actions. Uh, you'll always be involved with the uh, land acquisition process. Uh, hopefully coming up here pretty soon, by the end of this month, we'll have a CEQA addendum to review and be considered for adoption by the board of directors. If you recall, there's been some uh, minor design changes to the project site. They're going to be picked up in an addendum, and uh, we plan to discuss that with the committee uh, here pretty soon and then bring to the full board. And finally, uh, item C there, which is review and approve a cofferdam rental agreement with Kern County Water Agency uh, for the aqueduct turnout construction. And that item is uh, on the agenda tonight for action just after this uh, update. Moving into some engineering and field work. Uh, as I mentioned, Stantec has completed the 90% design deliverable of the aqueduct turnout. That was transmitted to the Department of Water Resources on August 12th for their review and comment. Uh, they're circulating that within uh, their various departments at DWR. And uh, I touched base with them this week. They are hoping to provide those comments back to us by the end of this week. Uh, once we have those comments, Stantec will uh, incorporate those comments into the 100% level of design, and we'll provide that back to uh, Department of Water Resources for one final plan check and uh, hopefully get that out to bid. Uh, second bullet point there, Stantec uh, field crew is observing the pump testing program uh, that's going on in the field at the High Desert Water Bank site and monitoring a network of wells uh, out there for uh, the aquifer response. So as those wells are being pumped, uh, they're looking at what's happening to the groundwater levels as well as how they recover when the pumping is uh, discontinued. 
On the Southern California Edison side, they submitted what's called a method of service study application to Edison. And what that does is allows them to look at the components of our project and the estimated electrical loads and perform an analysis of the options for electrical service by Edison to that project site. Uh, they've completed, Stantec has the 60% design of the recharge facilities and uh, Kennedy James and AVAC staff provided comments back to them on that uh, this week. And they are uh, working to incorporate those. And they're beginning to develop uh, specifications for bidding package for the next set of recovery wells. As you may recall, this project is envisioned to have uh, over 20, 25 uh, recovery wells out there. And so that's gonna take obviously quite some time to drill. So we're looking at beginning to uh, progress to the next set of recovery wells uh, so that we, we can begin building those as the project goes. Uh, for construction, as I mentioned, Pacific Coast Well Drilling uh, is out on site. They completed uh, the, the pilot boreholes and zonal testing at all the pilot recovery wells and completed construction on each of the wells and, uh, that are out there on the project site. You can see the table kind of summarizes the wells, the uh, casing size and the depth of each of those, as well as a, a little blurb about the status and a quick comment there. So you can see for uh, pilot recovery well uh, one, that pumping test was completed on September 6th and water quality samples uh, were collected from that. So that's one of the uh, goals of this pumping test program. One, to monitor the aquifer response through a network of monitoring wells out there. And uh, number two, to get some information on the water quality uh, at each of these uh, different wells. And so they've collected those samples and submitted them to the lab and we should be getting some water quality results back uh, within a couple of weeks. And then after uh, they're right now, they're in a resting period uh, for that pilot recovery well number one while they monitor how the aquifer uh, recovers. And then they'll be moving on to pump testing pilot, rec pilot recovery well number four. Uh, that pump test is expected to begin uh, today. I didn't hear anything about it yet today. <clears throat> we all hear something tonight. And then they'll do the next two wells uh, in sequence thereafter. Any questions on that? Was was there any, um, yeah, this, uh, George, was there any agriculture wells in that vicinity that we could have used for testing? Yeah, and we're, we're using some agriculture wells that are there to do some groundwater monitoring as these wells are pumped. Uh, and there was a well on site that we were looking at as a candidate for pump testing in addition to these, but we did a video inspection of that well down hole. There was some damage to the casing where they didn't feel comfortable that there's a pump down there. This cost just seemed so high, it's almost exorbitant right there, but I'm not sure if there's much you know, competition. When we, I wasn't, I don't, wasn't involved, I don't believe when these you know, were put out to bid, but did we have competition for those? Yeah, we put this out for a competitive bid, and actually Pacific Coast Well Drilling came in a million and a half. For, but yeah, about 1.5 million less than the rest of the bid. I, bidder, I believe yeah. we had four bidders at the time, four well drillers bid on this project. Was there, was there not, um, are, you, are these, what type of well drillers is just for commercial type or agriculture or just anything? This driller, this uh, well driller. Yeah, I think Pacific Coast has well. Uh, Pacific Coast well drilling has experience in both, um, both commercial and uh, and agricultural wells. Thank you. So moving into the project budget, uh, there's kind of a overall summary at the top there, but the agreement between Metropolitan Water District and ABAC. Uh, the capital cost of the project to be $131 million. It's broken down into several categories, which are outlined there on the table below. And just going through those, you can see uh, where we're at as far as what the approved contracts look like and about the uh, fourth column from the right-hand side, uh, what percentage of the budget that represents, uh, what the payouts to date in those different categories are and what the available budget looks like. So uh, currently we've uh, committed 
about twenty million uh, and a half, I guess twenty and a half million dollars uh, towards this project, uh, which with a payout of about seventeen million and a remaining available budget of one hundred ten million four hundred twelve thousand three hundred fifteen dollars. The next slide here uh, summarizes the contracts. Maybe at this point, uh, Director Knight, we can entertain your question here. But you see the contractors or vendors that we've entered agreements uh, with uh, for the services that they're contracted to provide. Top of that list is Kennedy Jenks for program management. You can see their contract amount of just under 1.3 million uh, and the payout to date of 544,000 there. Under that is Stantec. Uh, with a total contract price of $3.8 million, uh, payout there of 2.4. Uh, and then we get have Pacific Coast Well Drilling for the construction of four pilot recovery wells, kilometer nest monitoring well, as well as a pump testing program uh, for $4.7 million there. So uh, you can see the total contract of 4.8. There were some changes due to some gravel pack uh optimizations as they did that uh, work. And we've currently paid them about 75% of that contract. So the, the two items on there on the checklist tonight that Director Lane pointed out are for progress payments uh, for the work that they completed over the last couple months. And then the last two that are related to the CEQA addendum I mentioned, uh, that's work for uh, writing the actual addendum itself, as well as performing some biological surveys out in the field. Uh, small amount, paid. those are relatively small contracts there. Uh, we've only paid a portion of that as they uh, haven't gotten the invoices in for all of their work just yet. Does that get any, uh, Jinx, uh, the program you know, management, yeah. what, what percentage, you know, approximately what percentage and how you know, economic that is? Uh, for the from the overall looks, budget, looks like a pretty you know sizable amount. Um, that's probably about one percent. Yeah, less than one percent. Yeah, less than one percent of the total proposed capital cost. Of the okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving on to section six, which is a summary of the capital program account activity. Uh, so this account is funded by Metropolitan Water District. So as we, they provided us with an initial deposit of $5 million into this account uh, after they reimbursed us for some uh, expenses that we had prior to that. Uh, and as we draw that account down with the expenses of the project for engineering and construction, uh, and Department of Water Resources, that type of thing. Uh, Met we submit invoices to Metropolitan Water District for reimbursement, and they provide those uh, payments back to AVAC. So the top uh, five lines there, I guess, are all deposit deposits from Metropolitan Water District to reimburse AVAC for expenses. Uh, then you can see the account activity for June, July, uh, another deposit from Metropolitan bringing their cumulative total deposits towards the project to just under $20 million. Uh, and then the payments for the capital program account, uh, that's the well drilling and engineering uh, payments. Uh, and then we have one that I broke out of the August payments just for uh, transparency, I guess. Uh, that's a payment to the Department of Water Resources for $60,000. They bill in advance and uh, typically in $60,000 increments, and they draw that those funds down as they do things like review uh, our turnout design and, and look at uh, the location of the turnout in the aqueduct and draft agreements for us. So it's uh, there from September. So at the end of all that, uh, we currently have an account balance of about $2.7 million in the capital program account for the High Desert Water Bank project. Moving on to schedule, you can see the top uh, kind of purple area. That's tasks that have been completed to date. Uh, going left to right, you see the 30% uh, com comments were received from Department of Water Resources on our turnout design. Uh, Stantec held a design workshop with AVAC staff. Um, the 90% turnout, as I mentioned, submitted to DWR in August. 
the pilot well construction was also completed in August, and then shortly thereafter, the pump testing program began. Uh, so upcoming uh, next, uh, we hope to get the comments back from Department of Water Resources. You see the diamond there in red, that's a board action. Uh, now we'll come after this uh, update, but that's the cofferdam rental agreement with the Kern County Water Agency. And then, as I mentioned, we hope to have the 100% design submission to DWR, as well as advertise uh, that construction project for bids uh, here in early October. Uh, the bottom bar is the, is the pump testing program, which has a duration of August through November. Any questions on the schedule? Uh, so just a few other items uh, generally to update the board on. We discuss this with the committee. Uh, the CEQA addendum status, uh, as I mentioned before, we have those two consultants working on that. Uh, the draft project description is completed. They're working on finalizing some of the write-up for the habitat management lands, as well as the air and energy analysis. And we hope to have that final addendum back to us for review and legal review, and then back to the committee and uh, board for consideration. Uh, maybe by the end of September, if not uh, early October. Uh, amendment number two to Stantec. Uh, Stantec has indicated they're providing us with amendment proposal for some field time associated with the well drilling activities and some recommended additional geotechnical work on the project site. Uh, so we're looking forward to discussing that with them. Uh, we have a call tomorrow morning, so we'll talk with them about that. And once we have that in hand, we can discuss that with the committee and the board. Uh, construction management RFQ. Uh, we our staff is working on finalizing a request for qualifications uh, to solicit as needed construction management services to support all the construction activities that are upcoming for the high desert water banks. So of course, we have the uh, turnout construction on the California aqueduct. We also have the recharge basins, which will be constructed. Uh, the pipe, the bi-directional pipelines, which will serve to feed those recharge basins. Uh, there's a pump station there as well, and um, the ongoing well drilling progress. So uh, AVEC is going to need uh, someone in the field to be managing and monitoring that. So we have a RFQ that we plan to put out here pretty soon. Uh, once we have those proposals back, we will be reviewing those with the committee and ultimately the board. And then as I mentioned, the, the purple uh, shaded areas on the map at the beginning of the presentation uh, belong to Tejon Ranch. Uh, so we've discussed our proposed land uses on the Tejon Ranch parcels with Tejon uh, and discussing you know, how we should arrange uh, going about doing that. Uh, Tejon is amenable to pursuing a long-term lease agreement of that property. And so staff will be working with Tejon in the coming weeks to develop an agreement uh, for that uh, usage and bring that back to the committee uh, for review. And of course, the cost of that lease agreement, if it was an annual payment or something, would be reimbursed uh, by Metropolitan Water District as part of the annual operation and maintenance expenses, uh, which is uh, they've agreed to per our agreement. Any question on those four items there? Yeah, this is from, uh, Director Nato. Uh, thank you. Very good presentation. The Tahoe Ranch. Is that the property that's in purple on the map? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure. I, okay. Yep. Um, so that uh, uh, concludes, I think, that that item on the agenda. Then I just looped into this. Well, so, hang on. Hang on. So yeah. uh, do we need to take action on border uh, 7C1? No, that was just a status update. For this the information? Okay. Okay. So if you're okay, we can move on to 7C2. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Go ahead move on to 7C2. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dr. Donato. Uh, so 7C2 has to do with a rental agreement with Kern County Water Agency. I alluded to that towards the beginning of the presentation, looking for board action on this item tonight. Uh, so the picture that you see, coffer dam is a, is a term that we don't hear too frequently. Uh, a coffer dam is a structure that is put into the California aqueduct, which seals off a section of the aqueduct uh, to allow a new turnout to be cut into the canal lining there. So this image is actually of the cofferdam being placed 
in the upper Amar- or for the upper Amargosa Creek recharge uh, facility, the turnout that serves that project. Um, so you can see it as it's being lowered by the cranes down into the aqueduct. It has a, a slope of the sides of the cofferdam, which match uh, the slopes of the aqueduct in that particular location. Uh, that's lowered in there. The water that's trapped inside then gets pumped out, so they have a dry area to work. And then they cut the lining of the of the aqueduct and build in the turnout and metering structure. So we will need a cofferdam to install the turnout for the high desert water bank. And our design team was aware, looking at the particular slope of the aqueduct uh, lining at the location that we plan to install the turnout. And we're aware that a turnout fitting that particular location, the slope of the, of the aqueduct, uh, was used previously by Kern County Water Agency for construction of uh, one of their turnouts and was in very good shape and was uh, being housed uh, with Kern County Water Agency. So they uh, made a recommendation as a cost-saving measure to reach out to Kern County Water Agency to see if they would be amenable to us leasing that cofferdam uh, to do our construction. And that would be in lieu of having a contractor bid on the project to uh, construct or fabricate a brand new cofferdam uh, just for this project. Yeah. Just uh, for information, how was that uh, it transported? Um, I don't know. Does, uh, does it have yeah. to be cut? And, does it have to be cut? And, you no, know, I don't think it needs to be cut. Yeah, so. I don't think it'll have to be cut. But the, the contract, what our plan is, we'll have this lease or rental agreement with Kern County Water Agency. And then we're going to put the onus of transportation from Kern County to our project site and then back to Kern County when they're done with it on the, the onus of that on the contractor. Mm-hmm. So the contractor will be responsible for the pickup and delivery. So however they do that, if they have to, maybe it's, uh, I haven't seen details on it, but it may have been manufactured in a way that it could be disassembled to some degree in order to transport it. Um, this director and auto, um, the committee talked about that what we're going to, what we see in front of us that will be contingent upon the Department of Water Resources. We'll prove it tentatively, but it, we're not going to sign an agreement until this, until the state will approve us to have that particular um, um, design, the coffer dam in that area. Can you explain that, um, Matt? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, uh, Vice President Donato. Uh We did discuss that with the committee. Um, the You'll see here the terms of the agreement there. Uh, the fourth bullet point down there uh, indicates that AVAC will accept the cofferdam in an as-is condition. So uh, that raised, you know, a couple questions at the committee level. Uh, they had, you know, valid concerns that we haven't seen this cofferdam. We don't know uh, necessarily what the condition of it is. And, and also, as I mentioned, cofferdams are typically built to fit the, uh, you know, the particular slope of the aqueduct and the location that the turnout is going to be installed. So uh, those were the two big concerns from the committee. And uh, so we are going to have our engineers inspect that cofferdam and make sure that it's in that it is in good condition and will be uh, you know able to be used as in the as is condition and we're also uh, DWR has the design plans for this particular coffer dam and they're reviewing that as part of the 90% design package so uh, once we get the stamp of approval so to speak from Department of Water Resources that that this particular coffer dam is going to be uh, acceptable uh, at that point, we would be able to enter into this uh, lease agreement with Kern County Water Agency. Those are the two we'll see in the next next slide. I've kind of got those contingencies listed into the to the staff recommendation. So, uh, just going through the rest of the terms, I believe the uh, the full agreement may be in your board packet. Uh, but it it's a five month initial rental term, uh, fifty thousand dollars initial payment, which covers the first three months 
and a deposit of twelve thousand five hundred. Uh, that twelve thousand five hundred is also the monthly lease payment. Uh, which we would begin to pay after the initial three months, after that $50,000 uh, is drawn down for the first three months. Um, as I mentioned, uh, as is condition, and as uh, Matt mentioned, AVAC via the contractor uh, would provide the crane and transportation service of the cofferdam to and from the storage okay. facility. Is that what I heard earlier? That, uh, I thought uh, Kern County was going to deliver it, but we is going to be our no. contractor. Yeah, we will have our contractor pick it up and bring it back. So, and then one other thing to I think, note. I think we better find out how it's going to be delivered and what the cost would be. Yeah, that's, yeah. Sure, they can, can it, maybe it's delivered by helicopter. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like one big piece. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't see how a truck could uh, haul it without being disassembled. Yeah, and maybe bolted together at some point. Um, just for reference, we did uh, look at some previous cofferdam work. The upper Amargosa, the cofferdam that was shown in the photo there, we looked back at the bid that was submitted by Nicholas Construction, who performed the construction of that work. And they submitted uh, as the line item for the cofferdam uh, fabrication for that project was $650,000. Oh, so uh, we think this looks like a pretty good cost savings yeah. uh, if it works yeah. out to yeah. lease That's uh, this coffer dam. And, so. and uh, this Wayne Chisholm, general manager, and uh, the, our coffer dam is going to be considerably larger than the one that they used. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing to add to, to that is the cost of steel has increased uh, significantly since uh, that project was done. So uh, so we think this is a pretty good cost savings. And the the yeah, actual, well, I, I believe the best part of it is that's so, something we can just get rid of instead of hanging around our yard. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we I guess need, one, we, we we need another thousand acres for it. <laughs> right. Uh, so I guess the last item to note, I I didn't get to this point on the last slide, but the lease payments. Uh, you know, should we enter into this agreement, do not begin until we actually remove the coffer dam from the Kern County Water Agency uh, facility. So um, with that, uh, the recommendation from staff and the High Desert Water Bank Committee would be to authorize the general manager to enter the lease agreement with Kern County Water Agency for the use of this coffer dam for the construction of the High Desert Water Bank turnout, of course, subject to uh, inspection of that coffer dam as well as acceptance of that particular cofferdam by the Department of Water Resources. I'd be happy to answer any additional questions anybody may have. Is that it? That's all. Okay, so we got a board order in front of us. Um, this is uh, 7C2 <clears throat> to approve the concept that we got here and um, the intent uh, to at least, um, you know, consider uh, renting the uh, coffer dam. <clears throat> Have a motion, please. God, I guess you everyone went to sleep. Hello. This is this All is right. Shelley. I'll I'll make a motion to approve agenda item seven C two. Thank you. Thank this, Rob. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any any further discussion among the directors? Okay. Seeing none. Can we have roll call, please? Gary Van Dam. Yes. Audrey Miller. Yes. Robert Bob. Paris. Yes. George Lane. Yes. Shelley Sourceable. Yes. Frank Donato. Yes. Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you. Great presentations. A lot of information. Okay, so that brings us to the general manager's report on water supply, projects, and programs. Yes. Uh, Wayne. Vice uh, President Donato, uh, here's the uh, general manager's report for September 14, 2021. Uh, as our standard practice is, we take a look at the uh, Feather River, uh, River region, and you can see there's not much going on. A uh, uh, slight chance of rain Saturday and Sunday, which is any rain at all that we can get to uh, 
put in the soil would be beneficial for future runoff. Um, this is our uh, graph that we've used in the past. And you can see there was a little bit of precipitation in September up in that area. Let's see if we can get this thing to work. So. Can't hear you. Yeah, I'm trying to make this thing work. Oh, there it is. Okay. You can see we got a little bit of uh, precipitation right here. And uh, so as we move into uh, uh, the next version of the, uh, of the season, uh, we'll complete the water year at the end of uh, September. Uh, for, uh, uh, to take you to get an idea of what's uh, happening with regards to this current year, this is uh, average, this line here was up to 51.8 inches is the average that we receive in this watershed area that comes down into Lake Orville uh, through the Feather River and, and on through the Delta. Uh, and you can see this is 76, uh, 77, the lowest uh, amount of rainfall was uh, 19 inches. We're at 23.5. We're at the second lowest year of uh, record. And you can see a few of these years are 19 and 20, 14 and 15, 17 and 18. So these are all very recent uh, low, uh, low precipitation years. Uh, taking a look at the reservoirs, uh, as you look through the state, there's certainly a ton of orange out there. So you can see where we are from a reservoir level. Uh, we have the, this is Lake, uh, this is the Orville uh, reservoir level. I got another graph to highlight that for you. We're at 22% of the total capacity, um, and we're, we're uh, historical average is 35%. So you can see there's, uh, we're significant below, significantly below where, where we have been historically. And uh, uh, you can see there's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of orange out there. So wait, 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 can you go back? Sure. I got a couple, two questions. Um, Maybe three, but the first one is, uh, heard Orville, they closed down the hydroelectric power due to a lack of water. That's true. Okay. Second question. I also heard, and I want to say, I, I want to say what I really want to say. Hopefully God thinks changed today, but I heard the governor still decided to release all that water into the ocean. There, there is a um, uh, there, there is a release required for cold water control uh, that is um, maintained out of uh, Lake Shasta and also out of Orville in order to protect the uh, ball run salmon. What about the what about the twenty five million people down here? The third question I have: if if we have a same year next year, it'll be a catastrophe. It, it will be an extraordinarily difficult year, yes. No, it would be the worst year ever of record. Yes. But I don't understand why he would let the water out, couldn't wait one year to see if, if we got rain. I, I don't understand it. It's absolutely crazy. And furthermore, there is no notices throughout the state of California, Southern California, to conserve water. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say sure. one thing, uh, uh, Director Donato. Politics is a funny thing. Uh, you might you might hear a lot more discussion about the drought after the after tonight. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, everybody's going to have to cut back seventy five percent. Okay, okay. Well, that depends too. Okay, thank you for the update. I, I want to make sure those three things I was clarified for on the record that that actually has happened. And I heard it was 800,000 acre feet of water that was released into the ocean. So, um, yeah. Anyway, well, go ahead. Yeah, we can we can see there's there's quite a bit of uh, uh, you know here's our reservoir level where we are right now. We're, we're just a little bit a tick below 800,000 acre feet, which is where <laughs> we wanted to be at the end of the year. But you can see, look how much water has been, you know, this is an average way up here, and this is where we are. We're at the lowest level uh, that we've uh, been at in Lake Oroville, even uh, lower than 76 and 77. <laughs> wow. 
And uh, we, when we look here at uh, uh, San Luis, you know, our current storage level is 250,000 acre feet, about 12% of its capacity. And you can see we're at the lowest level that we've been at the end of the year. Usually we're, you know, we've, we've bottomed out, started the, uh, on average and began to peak up a little bit, but here we're, we're very, very low. So uh, closer to home, um, that's all the bad news I can give you with regards to the, uh, the state water project east side. Other than that, we aren't uh, banking any water at all. And uh, to take a look at uh, um, you know, with, with our uh, THM levels, you can see this line here corresponds to our internal goal. This is the maximum contaminant level that our customers have to meet. And you can see that all of our water is uh, well below uh, our, um, um, uh, our internal goal here. And this goes back from uh, 2016 to 2021. So you have quite a bit of history here. You can see we had some issues in 2016 and 17, but some of the practices that we uh, that we've been utilizing has showed this trend to, to go downward. And the project that was approved tonight will uh, also benefit uh, uh, our customers in that uh, aspect with regards to that. Um, we, uh, as, as, as uh, you can imagine, because of the poor, um, uh, the small amount of water that's flowing down the aqueduct, uh, the water tends to de de deteriorate as it travels. The longer it travels, high temperatures uh, will, um, you know, provide uh, additional uh, uh, moss and algae uh, issues. And uh, but through it all, the agency is still managing to uh, keep all of our water quality coming out of the plants at uh, well, uh, well below the. Uh, maximum contaminant levels, and we're doing a really good job uh, treating all the water that we received to get out into the system. Uh, we did complete our annual uh, sampling of all of our egg wells, and you can see the uh, THM results, as I mentioned previously. As far as operation maintenance goes, uh, we're currently using about 80 percent of our total capacity for uh, groundwater recovery. Um, the bench ranch uh, uh, one well is uh, being repaired and is back in operation. And then we also have uh, William uh, Lyles uh, procuring some materials for a leak we have out uh, at the East, uh, East Edwards Air Force Base area, I should say. And um, uh, we'll get that uh, completed in the next few weeks. Uh, we had one new confirmed case of COVID-19. Um, it was uh, not, uh, it was someone who uh, obtained the COVID-19 from, uh, from a family member and has been staying home and providing and uh, going through the protocols. Uh, as far as uh, events and schedules, uh, we have the AB Water Master meeting at the end of the month on the 22nd. We have uh, Zooming Through California series uh, on the 19th of uh, that August. Well, that was a typo. And then uh, we got the AB State Water Contract Report meeting 1014. Apologize for that. Uh, the uh, other thing I wanted to mention uh, to, uh, to the board is that um, um, there has been quite a bit of discussion with regards to the MOU that we have with uh, um, Waterworks 40 and the deposit reimbursement checks are going to be going out tomorrow uh, to all those that have provided a deposit uh, to the agency for under that program. And in addition to that, um, the draft press release is uh, going out tomorrow to the county for their input uh, so we can get that uh, distributed uh, as directed by the, by the board. And uh, our current system uh, with regards to the new water supply requests uh, through the letter program has uh, been working out very well. Uh, we've got a couple of new uh, requests this uh, the last board meeting and that uh, program's working well. So 
all of the uh, development communities getting their uh, can and wool can wool letters from Butterworks Forty in a very timely manner. Excuse me, this is Shelley. Why are we still receiving requests? Uh, they, we receive received the request, and as a, we outlined for the board, we, we send a letter instead of a receipt, and uh, that is going to be an interim measure until the MOU gets uh, uh, gets changed around and, and gets, um, uh, what's the term I'm looking for, Frank, uh, rescinded? Or uh, well, so so they're still they're still sending people over to us for us to give the letters for them to give the walk instead of just giving them the water. That's correct. Okay. All right. That's the clarification I was unclear of. Right. So that concludes. Uh, list, uh, that concludes my report. If there's um, any other questions, be happy to answer them, best of my ability. Any any other items for the director uh, directors for um, our general manager? Okay. Item ten, attorneys report. Nothing to report, Vice President Donato. Okay, thank you. You skipped uh, nine. What? You skipped number nine. Director's reports. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking right at my name. That's funny. Uh, director's report. Discussion of AVEC staff serving as administrators of the Inovai Water Master. Okay. Um, I was on the last call, and I've realized with the programs we are um, doing and what's up in the near future, I believe that um, our staff, our general, our system manager, and our um, Agency Secretary Patty or Human Resource um, Patty, I think we need to start um, moving them out and um, work with the um, water master for them to hire their own team, their own staff, so our employees can come back and work full time on these projects we have, and um, and then then they can go ahead and do their. Um, you know, run their agency the way they should run, run, run their agency. So I just want to make sure bring that to the director's attention so we start looking um, in that direction. Hey, Frank, this is Rob. Uh, yes. Yeah, can I suggest we uh, take that recommendation to the Water Master Committee and uh, discuss it so that we can come back to the board with some recommendations? Yeah, Rob. And that, and, and, we talked a little bit about it in a meeting yesterday, just a couple of us, and what we're looking for is we want to fade out by the end of the year. So we know we can't do it over you know, a couple of weeks, so it gives them plenty of time um, for them to make this um, transition. Uh, again, I, I think that's better discussed at the Water Master Committee uh, so that we can come up with recommendations. Okay. Okay, um, this is Director Sosabal. I, I just have a comment before we um, adjourn uh, stop, uh, this item. Um, at the last meeting of, this, of the um, Water Master, excuse me, there were committee meetings that they want to start having at that level, and that takes up a lot of our staff time. So in consideration of that and, and additional tasks that have been asked of our staff on behalf of the water master, I think it's time, very timely that we address this situation. So that's my comment about the water master staff. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, General Manager Chisholm, and uh, we'll uh, set up uh, we'll set up that uh, committee meeting and uh, um, uh, provide some information with regards to transition, and what that might look like to the committee. Okay, we'll work with Rob Rob and the committee, and let's move forward and start bringing our people back full time, and they can you know acclimate their people that would help them in, in, in what they're trying to accomplish. That's all I have to say. Any, uh, so anything, any other comments about this or just let Dwayne work on it? 
Okay. So let's bring us now down to, we did attorney's report, request for future, uh, future agenda items. None. Okay. Number 12, uh, closed session. Do we have um, I, any items here that pertain to closed session tonight? No, we do not. We get a night off. Oh, Keith did me a favor. That's good. <laughs> okay, so now uh, let's see here. Let's go to um, adjourn. What is it? Yeah, adjourn to, um, yeah, the motion to adjourn. This is Director Sersible. I make a motion to adjourn. This is Director Miller. Who is that? Audrey Miller. Yeah, Audrey. Okay. We get a first and a second to adjourn the board. Roll call vote. Gary Van Dam. Yes. Audrey Miller. Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. George Lane? Yeah. Yes. Shelly Sourceable? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. Okay. Meeting is adjourned. Good night. Be safe. Thank you. Good night, everyone.